Alright guys, how's it going? This is going to be my upper mid-range PC build, just in time for Christmas 2015. I've got one or two targets here that I want to meet. If you look at most of these kind of upper mid-range builds, they're all doing the same thing. Yeah, they go with an i5 and a GTX 970 and it just bores the hell out of me. I wanted to do something that little bit different, so that's what I'm going to do. I want to keep it below $1000, which should be around about 800-850 UK pounds. Obviously you're going to have to have stuff like a decent sized solid state drive, but the big thing for me was, I have basically decided I want this to be a DX12 build, so I'm going to go with an i7 instead of the i5. Obviously that's about $100 more, so you're going to need to make some cutbacks elsewhere. However, I think I've done a pretty good job of getting a really nice PC system built for under $1000. First of all, we're going to start with the case. At $68, it's certainly not cheap. However, it is really, really nice. I absolutely love this case. It's the NZXT Phantom 240, mid-tower chassis, in white. The thing about cases is, beauty is basically in the eye of the beholder, yeah? So you might not think that that's really nice. By all means, pick something that's more suited to your tastes. It's a really nice case. It scores very well in reviews. The same case in the UK. Yeah, you've got a slight case of rip-off Britain going on there. At £64. That's just something that we're all used to by now. There is only one left in stock here, so you might have to be very fast to get it at this price. Right, so next up is the power supply. We're going to go with a Seasonic S12 II. It's a 520 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. It's a very good power supply. It will easily go over 520 watts, but you're not going to be pushing it anywhere near that anyway with this build. Just be aware though that it's a little bit light for dual card setups. However, I have already decided that this is not going to be a Crossfire or SLI build. It's going to be a single card build. It is, after all, only the upper mid range. We are not quite in the enthusiast range yet. Again, it's a pretty decent price for what is a very high quality power supply. Very, very nice price in the UK. It does say here it may arrive after Christmas, so just be careful about that. There's only one left in stock. You can probably get it elsewhere, but you might pay an extra 10, 20 pounds on top of this. There are other power supplies that will do the job just as good. Right, so the motherboard. The whole point here was simple. Get the cheapest Z97 motherboard that you can get. Z97 is the enthusiast class of motherboard and the range in price from around $100 up to stupid amounts of money for a motherboard. The thing to remember here is motherboards basically do nothing for your overall performance. It's all about features, stuff that you don't really need. This one's cheap because it's got two USB 3 ports. Yeah, do you need more than two USB 3 ports? You know, that's what I'm wondering. It's not SLI compatible. It is Crossfire X ready. It's got everything you would expect, yeah? It's got four memory channels and it has got the, the dual card compatibility. It's just not as fully featured as a really high-end Z97 motherboard. It will allow you to overclock your CPU though, and it's a very simple method of doing it through the MSI BIOS. Simplicity is another thing that's important when you're doing these things. Most guys are not enthusiasts, yeah? And they're just wanting to try and get a little bit more performance with as little hassle as possible. The Z97 PC Mate will allow you to do that. Right now, very nice price. It's $75 after rebate. In the UK, it's £65. Right, the undoubted star of the show, i7-4790K. Everybody losing their minds over the new Skylake stuff. It's not worth it. Check out the i5. $328 for the 6600K? I mean, why would you pay more for this instead of buying the previous generation i7? It's not because of the performance advantage that this has got, because it doesn't have it. Right now, the CPU to buy is the i7-4790K. It's 4 GHz at stock, with a 4.4 GHz turbo, and in most cases, it will outperform the i5-6600K. On top of that, you're not looking at spending an awful lot on new DDR4 memory. In the UK, it's £240. This one's just the bare CPU. I would have went with the bare CPU here as well because obviously you're going to be putting on an aftermarket cooler as the Intel stock coolers are absolutely rubbish anyway. Now, we're simply going to go with an 8GB DDR3 stick of memory. One single stick. That way, if you feel that you want to add more later, by all means, go ahead. If you really want to, you can go with an 8GB cat. It's actually cheaper to go with the 8GB cat. Makes absolutely no difference. The difference between dual channel memory and single channel memory is not even registering yet. It's less than half a percent. So by all means, go with the 4 gigabyte times 2. Either way, it's simply a case of buying the same thing again if you do decide you want 16 gigabyte of memory. The Crucial Ballistic Sport is probably the best in terms of speeds and latencies at this price range here in DDR3. Now, there's only really two choices of graphics cards. You're either looking at the GTX 970 or the R9 390. Both are almost identical in performance. 
The 390's got that little bit more grunt as you increase the resolution. However, my guess would be most of you would be playing at 1080p. However, if you do consider going for a 1440p monitor, you will find that the R9 390 just starts to pull away that little bit. And I do believe that AMD has got the better DX12 titles coming up soon. This for me is a sensible option right now. Very nice price at $290 after rebate. Slight difference here in the UK. I'm going to go with the MSI one. It's £270. Again, rip off Britain in full force there. <laughs> If you really want to go with the NVIDIA card, the prices are round about the same. The only drawback of the 390 is, of course, its higher power draw. However, the Seasonic power supply will be able to handle it with no problems whatsoever. I've had a check and both of these cards will fit into the case with no problems. Might be a little bit of a tight fit with the MSI, but if you find it is quite a tight squeeze, you can actually remove the spare hard drive bracket, yeah? And that gives you plenty of room for any size of card in the case. Yep, so for me the R9 390 is the smart choice. Right, solid state drive. I kind of toyed with the idea of a 500 gigabyte one. But once you look at the prices, yeah, you're looking at paying around 75 to 80 dollars for it. The 500 gigabyte one's about double the price. The way I look at it is a 250 gigabyte solid state drive. Let's say you're going to use 30, 40 gigabytes of that for Windows. That leaves you with 200 gigabytes worth of games and programs. Do you really need the 500 gigabyte SSD? You're going to have at least three, 400 gigabytes sitting around doing nothing out of this 500 gigabyte, yeah? Yeah, sure, you may fill it up. Why not just go with the 250 gigabyte now and then buy another 250 gigabyte later if that's what you need? Because the 500 gigabyte is basically double the price right now anyway. Prices will come down. More likely, you'll just actually buy a bigger SSD in a couple of years' time if you need it. So for me, 250 gigabyte is definitely the sweet spot, certainly for an upper mid-range PC build. It's a pretty nice price in the UK, £57.30. This is the one that I bought a few weeks ago, and I've been pretty pleased with it. Again, we're just going to go with a 1TB hard drive. Do a search for a 1TB hard drive. If you really think you need the 2TB hard drive, then by all means pay an extra $15. I mean, that's the thing, yeah. It's only $15 more for 2TB, so you may well think that that's worth it. Slightly more, maybe $25 in this case. £35 in the UK for the Western Digital 1TB. Again, go for the 2TB if you think you need it. And the last thing you're probably going to want is the Arctic Freezer 13. There are better CPU coolers and cheaper ones. For example, the Hyper 212 EVO is a very famous cooler. However, it doesn't quite fit into the case. The 212 EVO is just a little bit too big to fit into what is actually quite a narrow case. In all honesty, the difference is pretty minimal. The Freezer 13 is going to be quieter. It can dissipate 200 watts of power. Even if you overclock the i7 to maybe 4.4 gigahertz, you'd get nowhere near 200 watts on it. More like 120 watts. Plenty headroom there. You're just not getting fantastic cooling performance like you get with a much more expensive CPU cooler. However, this one does the job fine. The whole point of this is really getting something nice and quiet and something that completely outperforms the stock cooler in every department. So that is my December 2015 upper mid-range PC build. I set out to get an i7 below $1,000. I wouldn't say that I've cheaped out in other components, yeah? It's still overclockable, even though the motherboard is one of the cheaper Z97 motherboards. The whole point of the Z97 is just to give you that extra bit of overclockability here. And the PC Mate motherboard lets you do it at a flick of a switch, basically. The Freezer 13 cooler fits really easily as well, which is important to people who are not extreme enthusiasts. Again, I wanted this to be well set for DX12, the 8-thread CPU and the AMD graphics card, which to me looks to be a smarter option for future titles. It's already the same speed in DX11, so why not just go with what looks to be the better option for DX12 as well. The power consumption is a little bit of a pain compared to the 970, however, the very high quality Seasonic power supply can handle it with ease and in actual fact will easily handle something like a Titan X or 980 Ti if you decide that you want to upgrade at some point. So long as it's like the high end single chip graphics cards, your Fury X's and stuff like that, no problem whatsoever. The only drawbacks again, you're not going to be able to do SLI or Crossfire. However, if you watch my SLI versus Crossfire video that I made recently, you're probably thinking that's not a massive drawback. The PC feels like it is almost high end simply because you know the i7's there and that is what I set out to achieve. At 992 US dollars, I managed to hit my target. It's a little bit over in the UK. Prices fluctuate, yeah. I'd hope to get it for 800, but 832? I think it's probably worth stretching that extra 32 pounds to get to this. 
As ever, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Feel free to ask me any questions about any of this stuff. If you want to help out the channel, there's going to be a link to my forum in the description below that will have links to all these parts on Amazon. So yep, I'm interested in knowing what you think about this one. Feel free to let me know. I'll catch you later guys.